Hi, here's a quick video just to show how to install a Shades of Coffee Chrono Cube. Um, this is a brand new Gadget Classic. It's a 2023 Classic Evo. Um, very, very simple to install this. Probably take no more than about two minutes. So first of all, you take the filler lid off, remove the drip tray, sorry, remove the uh, a warming tray. You don't really need to disconnect the, the earth cables at the moment. We're uh, going to be fairly quick inside here. Now, within a Gagia Classic, it's fairly easy to locate the solenoid valve. It's uh, straight down here. It's a, a black or, or grey device. Um, and we're going to, to put the sensor of the, of the chrono cube on the, on the side of that there. So here's how the chrono cube arrives. If we open it up, inside there's a small bag. We provide a metal disc, and the metal disc is an adhesive backing, and this is so that you can actually stick this onto a, a plastic surface if you wanted to stick it onto a, uh, a plastic espresso machine, or you wanted to stick it onto a, a top box, then you can quite easily just peel the back off here, put this straight onto a, a plastic surface or other non-metallic surface, um, and then the Chrono Cube will quite happily stick to that using the magnets that it has internally within it. So the Chrono Cube itself comes in a small bag, it's a fairly concise device. It has a, a sensor, a long piece of cable, and a, uh, and that's the actual device itself, the Chrono Cube. So all we'll do is we'll remove the, the wire wrap. You have about 40 centimeters of, of wire, and you'll see on the end of the, the sensor here that there's some um, uh, adhesive uh, tape on the back of there. It's pretty strong adhesive tape. So we'll use that in a moment to stick the sensor straight onto the, uh, straight onto the solenoid valve. And then the actual chrono cube itself has magnets within it. So the magnets will stick either on the top, on the side, on the back, on the bottom. So you can stick the chrono cube to a number of different metallic surfaces. On a, a Gagia Classic, we very often put them on the front. Um, it'll also locate very nicely on top of the cup warming tray, so you can put it on the cup warming tray, at the back of the cup warming tray, or at the front of the cup warming tray, and the cable will route down through the, through the gap at the front of the, of the classic cup warming tray. Um, so there's a number of different mounting options. Um, you can also mount this, because there's magnets at the top of it, you can mount it uh, underneath something, so you can put it on a classic around the group, so it's right next to the steam wand, you can just mounted underneath the underneath the group um, so a number of different mounting options for exactly where you want to put it um, it's really entirely up to you for the sake of this example we're actually going to mount it um, on the front of the machine and we'll put it on the on the cup warming tray uh, for the purposes of, uh, of demonstrating it I'll, I'll show it just lying down on the cup warming tray so you can you can see it counting up but we'll stand it up on the cup warming tray or even just mount it on the front of the of the classic immediately above the above the brew switch so actually installation is really simple once we've decided where the, the solenoid valve is as i said in the classic it's down here we want to install the sensor in such a way that we can quite easily route the cable from the sensor through to where we have the the chrono cube mounted so on here it's pretty simple all we want to do is mount the sensor vertically so that it is typically in exactly the same orientation as the of the pipe coming out of it so we'll be mounting it on the side of the of the solenoid valve halfway down fairly squarely in the middle of the solenoid um, and we'll be using the adhesive tape to do so we can test it so we can hold the valve on we can hold the sensor on there um, and what we should do to start with is just make sure that the actual chrono cube works so the, the chrono cube sensor detects magnetism and there's magnets inside the inside the chrono cube itself. Um, it won't work to start with because we include a, a small tab covering the, the battery contacts. So the very first thing you do before you do any sort of testing is remove the small tab from the battery contacts. The chrono cube will now work. So we can see it's displaying zero zero because it's first of all powered up. And if we apply the sensor to the magnets on the top or the bottom or the side of the device, it'll start counting. If we take the magnet away or take the sensor away, it'll stop counting. The Chrono Cube's designed so that within 20 seconds, it will turn off, it'll reset, 
and it'll sit there back in an idle state with a blank screen waiting for you to pour your next shot. If you decide to resume, for whatever reason, it'll resume counting from where it left off, providing you resume within that 20 second period. So if you're doing something like a, a pre-infusion using the, the brew switch on a classic, the counter will pause whilst the, the pump is off, whilst the solenoid valve is off, um, and then it'll commence again for the duration of your of your brew. So you'll have your, your pre-infusion time, it won't count the pause, but then it'll count again once you start the pump. It won't start from zero, it'll start again from, or it'll continue from, from where you left off. So we've waited the 20 seconds, it's turned off. If we apply it again, it'll come on and it'll start again. So we're very happy that the Chrono Cube is working. So all we've got to do now is just put the sensor onto the uh, solenoid. So it's a simple case of just pulling the, the backing off the, uh, these things are often tricky, uh, pulling the backing off the adhesive uh, tape on the back of the Chrono Cube. It is very strong adhesive, so make sure you get it right and in the right place in the right time. So what we're going to do is just place the, the Chrono Cube sensor, as I said, about halfway down the, the, um, uh, the solenoid valve in the same orientation as the, the solenoid itself. And we'll just place it on there with the cable coming out of the top. So the cable's coming out of the top as it is. Um, it should work. We'll, uh, we'll hazard a guess and say it is going to work. So on a classic, it's very easy just to route the cable in and around here. It's very flexible silicon cable. We'll have it so that it comes out of the front here, just above the, um, just to the side of the, the, um, the, the, the cup warming tray mount. So we're happy that that's going to work. Normally, probably you would test this before reassembling. I'm just being overly confident. So more than slide the cup warming tray back in, place it on there. Push it down on there. Do our screws up again. Replace the lid. So everything is finished. That's all done. I'll just put the, the lid there like that. Now we'll very briefly turn the machine on and just hit the brew switch just once just to watch it uh, to watch it start up. The, uh, the machine has absolutely no water in it, so it won't do a huge amount, but it'll start. And you can see the Chrono Cube running there. If I just run it for a few seconds, it'll count quite happily. Very noisy machine, because it's got no water in it, so the pump is running dry, which it uh, obviously doesn't like too much. And we'll see now that within a few seconds, the Chrono Cube display will turn off again. Once it's turned off, it's drawing very, very little power. It's waiting for you, to, uh, uh, for you to brew your next shot. So it will sit there idle. There's no power switch on the Chrono Cube. There's no nothing. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to do anything at all with it. It's completely autonomous. It will sit there now waiting for you to brew your next shot. And when you brew your next shot, you walk up to your machine, hit the brew switch, and again, it will start counting again. Automatically stopping whenever you stop the pump and it'll display that finish time for around 20 seconds before eventually turning off again. So up to you where you put your Chrono Cube, on the front, on the side, anywhere really, there are magnets in the side of it, in the bottom of it, in the top of it, pretty much all over it, anywhere you, th you think you may want to place the Chrono Cube, you probably can. So hopefully that helps. Very quick installation video showing the Chrono Cube from Shades of Coffee.